Texas leaders are still at odds over plans to lower your property taxes. But on Tuesday, the Texas Senate announced its largest property tax relief plan yet. The Senate plan maintains Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick's priority of raising the homestead exemption to $100,000. It also lowers school district property tax rates and expands the state's franchise tax exemption for businesses. The governor and the House have put more of an emphasis on lowering those tax rates and Patrick hopes the new Senate plan can break that stalemate. A lot of what is in this bill is the best of what there was quite a bit of agreement on. So we ask our colleagues in the House to come back and give this bill serious consideration. The taxpayers are waiting for their tax cut and the clock is ticking. If the plan passes, it would require voter approval in a constitutional amendment election there is an August deadline to get a measure on the ballot for the November election. Shortly after the Senate's vote, Governor Abbott's office signaled he still favors his own plan. A spokesperson wrote that the governor's goal is to put Texans on a pathway to eliminate their school maintenance and operations property taxes. And the best way to do that is to devote all property tax relief to cutting property tax rates, end quote. For Insight, we're joined by the author of the Senate property tax plan, Republican State Senator Paul Betancourt of Houston. Senator, welcome on to State of Texas. Thank you. So we've heard the governor call for a plan to use all of the money that's set aside for property tax relief and use it to lower school property taxes. Your plan, however, uses some of that money to also raise the homestead exemptions. Some people watching from the outside see a state where Republicans are in control of everything and think, right. you know, they should be able to figure this out. They had all session to work on a property tax uh, compromise. That was the number one promise that we heard from many Republicans on the campaign trail. So what is your message to those constituents who might see some of this infighting going on and think, well, this seems a little disorganized? Where, where's our tax cut? Well, the, and, and that's a great question. And look, in the special session, the Senate passed a bill the first day and, and we have stayed in session and we've taken many other actions. You all have covered it. Uh, unfortunately, the House passed their version, then quit. It was called signy die. Now, it's very difficult to negotiate by telephone, but we've been doing our best from the Senate. Uh, and what we did this week was pass another version of all the best ideas that we saw and passed it unanimously, had a press conference, asked for the House to come back, uh, come back to work, um, that, which still hasn't happened yet. Um, so it takes, unfortunately, two chambers, both the upper chamber and the lower chamber, to pass a bill and send it to the, uh, the governor. Um, and... So well, we'll wait for that to occur because these good ideas stand for themselves. Um, my, my tweet about this at Team Betancourt went to 132,000 people, which is astonishing. I've never seen, uh, I've never had a tweet go that far in my life. Um, so people are really interested in this. The homestead exemption is a very important point of this because you don't pay. See, the, mo the most powerful thing I can do as a tax writer is say, don't pay, you know, and that's an exemption or a rollback rate reduction uh, or a franchise tax doubling. So 67,000 uh, home, I mean, business owners don't pay. That's the way to go. Okay. Um, and, and importantly, I hope that message gets through to my house colleagues and they come back and they take the bill up. Well, Senator, it seems like it's, uh, it's going to be a long, hot summer at the legislature. The Senate now adjourned until Tuesday, the last day of the first special. So it seems like we're going into special number two. Is that your assessment? Well, look, I, I never try to, um, uh, you know, predetermine what the governor uh, will do. Uh, that's up to him. But we put the Senate has put a great tax uh, bill out for the public. Lieutenant Governor Patrick supports us strongly. We've been getting just fabulous response from all parts of the state uh, because it has a fantastic homestead exemption of $100,000. It's got, you know, tax relief in the form of tax compression and franchise tax relief. Uh, it's got limitations on the growth of government so that future tax bills for cities and, excuse me, for school districts won't go up more than 1.75%. And, and, and when you sum all that together, you get a, a, a fantastic uh, uh, plan uh, for the public and we've been getting nothing but positive responses. So I, I hope that uh, that what we pass says something. See, we've stayed and worked. 
we stayed and worked to come up with the best possible tax plan. Uh, and that's what you have to do. And then once it passes, you've got to go listen to the public. Um, and, and, and this is a, a huge extension over what's already worked last year in Houston, Austin, and San Antonio. And, and $18 billion is a record number. In fact, Lieutenant Governor Patrick says it is uh, the, a worldwide record. And, uh, and it's bipartisan. All the Republicans, all the Democrats support this plan uh, in the Senate. So I, I hope that the plan speaks for itself. Uh, and uh, you can see all of it at, uh, you know, on my social media and get more details uh, because I don't think we leave any taxpayer behind. All right, let's get more viral tweets for you, Senator. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thanks, Senator. <laughs> if you want people to pay their toll bills, you have to make it easy, intuitive, uh, lessen the barriers for people to access that technology. A mobile app could help one Texas toll road system drive down customer complaints. Why plans to get a text tag app up and running stalled out.